Some peptides, you're gonna heal. Others, you're gonna gain some muscle. And others, prevent sunburn and make you horny. Well, there's a new class of these peptides that are in town. They're weight loss peptides, specifically around GLP-1, variants of them. In fact, it seems that they're coming out weekly these days. This is the cutting edge science. We're expanding the capabilities of what was already very successful, GLP-1. You lose weight with it. The only problem is that there's a ton of side effects that come with it that a lot of people just bear because they kind of have to. They know it's effective, but they're going to do it anyway. What if I told you, though, with Retitrutide, the latest saga in the weight loss peptides, let's say it's GLP-1, but it doesn't have the side effects, at least not near the magnitude of them. On paper, this one pretty much breaks the laws of thermodynamics. Everything you need to know about not only Retitrutide, but GLP-1 weight loss science, if you're interested in how your body works and the science of how compounds affect it or just supplements in general, you are in the right place. This is the cutting edge, my brothers. Peptide sciences is not something we've covered before, but this is where everything is happening. As AI expands, as our technology expands in general, as our understanding of this stuff expands, using AI, we're gonna to start to see this stuff. The capabilities are gonna be wild. And the number of products are gonna come out more and more frequently. In fact, like I said, we're seeing this every week now. We got a front row seat to it, and that's what I'm excited about. So of course, we're gonna cover those here on this Pro Hormone channel, but we cover pretty much every supplement there is. My brothers, this is Red True Tide. Let's get it. You are now in the presence of a... So what exactly is Retitrutide? Developed by the American pharmaceutical company, Eli Lilly, Retitrutide was designed to be an experimental drug for those who are obese. And it's considered a triple glucagon hormone receptor agonist. It's got GLP-1, the same found in semaglutide, which targets the glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor. GIP, which targets the glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptor. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but I promise you this is very simple stuff. I'll explain it here in a second. And thirdly, we've got GCR, which targets the glucagon receptor. So the first one, you probably have heard this one before. It's called GLP-1. It's very popular. Wagovi, semaglutide, it's probably the most popular weight loss of them that there is to sell today. But that's where it ends. Semaglutide has GLP-1. Wagovi has GLP-1. That's it. Retitrutide, this is where things differ. Because now we've got GIP, which increases or amplifies our insulin, our insulin resistance. Thirdly, which also semaglutide does not offer, Again, just GLP-1. Retitrutide has the third one, which is called GCGR, or glucagon. This one's going to increase your fat oxidation or allow you to lose more fat. All in all, what I'm really trying to say is that Retitrutide, it does have this fat loss component that we're all looking for. But it's also focused on metabolism in three different layers. All right, so let's talk about the mechanism of action here. So GLP-1, I'm really not going to spend too much time on this because there's so much information out there, but just know this decreases appetite by activating the hypothalamus and thus increasing potentially just in rats, not in humans, AMPK and decreasing mTOR. That's fat loss and decreasing muscle gain, which is why we need the other two components. Let's shout about them. And the second is GIP with this super long name, glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide activation. So GIP's main responsibility is to increase our insulin secretion as well as protect our beta cells, or the cells responsible for within the pancreas that are the output of insulin, as well as driving additional nutrients, focused nutrients to the muscle, not fat cells, just to be very clear. And then lastly, the last one is the most powerful of all of them. You've got AMPK that's increased from GLP-1 and thus MAPK, the muscle building side, that's decreased from GLP-1, their inverse levers. Well, GIP is going to come in and potentially increase. And I say potentially because it's just in rodents, not in humans just yet that MAPK, thus driving up muscle while we're cutting. But not all the way, we still got one more. The third one, glucagon, or glucagon receptor activation. This one increases energy expenditure, even while you're doing absolutely nothing. And it's gonna drive fat oxidation and lipolysis beyond what you could do naturally, helping you burn the stored fat, rather, in the muscle. This is where it gets interesting because there are some studies that say it indirectly raises AMPK, which would add to that fat loss lever and decrease from the MAPK lever, but it's really not hitting it hard enough to really suppress that mTOR pathway. It doesn't affect the mechanism involved in muscle creation. It has a half-life of approximately six days, so it's in and out of your system in 12. And just one more for you, because we just like to get more value around here. You see, GLP-1 is going to decrease your metabolism, thus decreasing your energy output or energy levels. You're just going to feel more fatigued. It's part of the process. 
However, with retitrutide, more specifically GCGR or glucagon, this is going to increase your hepatic energy, which for a cut, I got to say, I don't think we've seen this before. This guy, for instance, was able to lower his stimulant intake when he was on retitrutide, cutting his caffeine in half and then cutting his Adderall down significantly and still noticed a perceptual and anecdotal, but still relevant improvement in productivity. So guys, if you've had an experience with retitrutide, honestly, it is the most popular talked about drug right now in this niche world. So by popular, I mean really just us. <laughs> but nevertheless, there are a ton of questions about it. It is hyped up. And to be honest, based on this stuff, it really should be. If you've taken it before, we would love to hear about your experience. Not just because we want engagement, but because we're here to actually learn. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. So brother, teach us. Will this cause suppression of my natural testosterone? Will this lead to hair loss? Will it mess with my hormones? And where can I buy this stuff? All questions answered right here in this supplement encyclopedia. Pick it up below. All right, back to it. At the highest dose of retitrutide, studies show an average of 24.2% in weight reduction in 11 months or 48 weeks. Overall, it was pretty well tolerated and provided substantial and clinical meaningful reductions in body weight. So there are a number of issues with this study, which we're not going to go into, but do note that it did take a DEXA scan or use a DEXA scan to measure its participants, which is very important because it really is the only true way to control for some of the other things like water weight and then some of that muscle loss that could be attributed to this weight loss, which we have to separate out the fat. So this 24.2% is in fact the real fat loss, not just weight loss, which, well, it doesn't get any clearer than that. So switching gears a little bit here, retitrutide versus the generic GLP-1 or Ozempic, Wagovi, whatever brand name you want to go with. So really the main difference between GLP-1 or Ozempic and retitrutide is the energy levels. If you're talking to anybody who's ever taken GLP-1 or Ozempic, or maybe you have before, you probably notice pretty quickly that your energy levels decrease very sharply after like week one. Primary reason for this is what's called gastric dumping. It sounds terrible. But what that means is that you're not hungry, your metabolism is shot, and your, yeah, your appetite is going to be suppressed for an extended period of time. In fact, the thought of food can sometimes make you a little bit queasy. So, yes, you will not have much energy on just a straight-up GLP-1 like Ozempic. Red a true tide, on the other hand, this is where it kind of stands out. This is where the magic shines. Because it's not just GLP-1 like we mentioned. It also has glucagon, which doesn't increase ATP. It actually decreases the mechanism that decreases ATP. Because see, what I didn't mention about GLP-1 is that while you do lose the weight, it's pretty much guaranteed, you're also going to lose the energy with it. Glucagon brings up ATP by decreasing the mechanism that decreases ATP. Therefore, one's bringing it up, one's bringing it down. By the time it's all said and done, where you are naturally and your metabolism is just feeling good, feeling healthy, this is where your metabolism is during a cut now. Five, 600 calories down where you typically are, which is not something, not only have we not seen before, it literally has not existed. This may not be the cutting edge of science, but in terms of a consumer products, weight loss wise, I'd, uh, well, I'd like someone to find something better. So as mentioned, appetite with retitrutide and semaglutide are both going to be down suppressed, but because of glucagon for retitrutide, the energy levels are going to be maintained. While, as I mentioned, your energy levels on semaglutide, they're going to tank. Now, in terms of the mechanism, semaglutide, pretty normal route here. Rodents, humans, now it's approved by the FDA. Retitrutide, on the other hand, they skipped the rodent studies just right into the humans. Must have thought it was just that good. And today, they're in phase two trials. Now, the question comes up, how? How did retitrutide just skip the rodent phase, go right into humans? And, you know, the pessimist in me is thinking, well, this is probably a money grab for these high-tech... <laughs> these big pharmaceutical companies. Or, it actually works. And it's safe. Actually, or, and, it's safe. Or it's all three. Let's be honest, it's probably what it is. And hopefully it's not just two of those. Either way, guys, because rodents were not included within the mechanistic studies, or if there weren't any mechanistic studies at all, and typically they do that on rodents first, because it went right to the humans. Well, uh, semaglutide, they had rodents, they had humans, they had mechanistic studies. They know how it works. With retitrutide, though, they don't, technically. So the theory about AMPK and 
MAPK, that's all theory. It's the running theory, but it still needs to be taken with a grain of salt. What shouldn't be, though, is the number of anecdotal cases online. There have been an enormous number. The before and afters, I swear there are more before and afters on Reddit Truth Eye than any other compound on the internet right now. As for the proper dosing and the side effects, now in the exact same way that we would dose Ozempic, that's starting off at a dose today and then working our way up over the mic, two weeks, maybe even three weeks, we titrate up, we adapt. We have to allow our body to adapt first. Please note, Reddit Truth Eye is strong. It's very intense. So be sure you start somewhere around, and by the way, I'm not a doctor, do not listen to me, but if it were me, I would start at two milligrams for the first four weeks, and we titrate up from there, but weeks five through eight, I personally would bump it up to four milligrams. The reason we also want to go up so slowly is that this stuff has a dramatic impact on our GI tract, our esophagus, our stomachs, and though we can't avoid it, the slow titration up will help at least mitigate some of it. In weeks nine through 12, this is where you can go up to eight milligrams, where the real benefits kick in. And this is also where the dropout raises arise. And then if you can make it, depending on the side effects that you might experience, target 12 milligrams, which this is going to be the maximum recomposition zone, guys. This is going to be the maximum benefits, the maximum fat loss, the maximum metabolic benefits at 12 milligrams. And if you hold this out to 26 weeks, this is going to be your best case scenario. Again, if you can handle the side effects. And the full trial-based protocol is 48 weeks. But again, only if you can handle the side effects. Don't ignore them. Like this one. We saw gastrointestinal issues, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, the works. But to put it in perspective, it's mostly mild to moderate when we compare it to semaglutide. Another side effect, heart rate for some increases until week 24, where it peaks and then declines thereafter, aka it normalizes. Guys, it is really important that we understand the difference between the side effects of what's actually happening, that's cutting, that's weight loss, and separating that out between the drug itself, the compound, semaglutide, or sorry, reditrutide. There's going to be so many more of these. This is just the beginning, guys. This is the cutting edge stuff. But the main difference, guys, is that we can get rid of Reditrutide. We can get rid of Ozempic, all that stuff. When we cut, our body goes into starvation mode. And when it does this, it immediately starts downregulating the thyroid. Also causes hair loss. This is the wife, Hillary, after five weeks on semaglutide, GLP-1. The point is, is that we can't necessarily separate everything. But here's what we do know, or at least have theorized. And... There's been a lot of anecdotal stuff to support. mTOR, it goes up or at least it's modulated in a way where AMPK is not stunting our gains when we're going through this cut. So while we're still in the starvation mode, there's some preservation there. And the GIP is going to increase energy, which is going to fight this, which you're going to have extreme lethargy, which like we mentioned on GLP-1. Guys, there's nothing like this one. And be sure, by the way, that you take this with fat. See, fat increases hormonal activity. Hormonal activity in this case being upregulation of your thyroid. That's a big one. When that goes out of whack, you see people who have thyroid issues, they gain a bunch of weight. That's not good. The second is modulate dopamine. We need to make sure that that stays in line. Guys, this is the base layer. If you use this as a base layer for any stack, you cannot go wrong. At least from my experience, I'm not telling you to do that. But if I were to do it, anabolically, we'd have to add on, right? Like a durable one by high tech, this is going to give you some joint lubrication as well as some increased strength. Add that in with your test base, chosen one, which this is going to give you some more aggression or you're not really going to have that aggression because you're going to be a little, ugh. So this is going to give you that aggression and give you some of that libido back that you've probably lost. My brothers, until next week, I love you. This is a good one, right? We're going to cover some more peptides, I promise. Until next week, stay safe and stay. There's something on both sides of me, but swole. My brothers.